Hi guys, what is up? It is John Hopper here from HP Productions and I've been getting a lot of questions on how to, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, do this quick little flash effect uh, with Video Copilot's free plugin called Saber. And let's take a look at what we are going to be creating. So, looks complicated. It's actually fairly simple. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start with our base plate. You can see mine's nine seconds long and you can see I'm running through the frame. I'm trying to keep a nice steady pace. Uh, you're going to need a locked off camera, which means you're going to have to have it on a tripod and or a table or chair. Uh, basically, you don't want it to be moving at this point. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go up to time and enable time remapping. And as you can see, we have a keyframe at the beginning and a keyframe at the end of the sequence. I'm going to go ahead and scrub through until I start to lean down to go in for a run, which I'm going to go ahead and set it just uh, about right there. And we're going to go ahead and create a keyframe. And then we can go ahead and create a keyframe at the end right as I leave frame right there, which leaves me with uh, about five frames here at the end. Oh, no, 12 frames, sorry. Go ahead and do that. And we're going to select these by clicking and dragging, selecting both of them. And I'm going to go ahead and come back to this frame, and I'm going to go using uh, page up and down. You can go ahead and go forward about five frames. That's how long I'm going to make this, which will put us at that's six. About right there. Uh, maybe we'll make it just a little bit longer. We'll, we'll go there. Go ahead and drag these. As you can see, being pulled back. So, as you can see, it's very quick. I'll do a RAM preview. Right through. Okay, and then it ends to black. What you can do there is, in this section here, create a keyframe and just drag this out. Uh, nothing's really moving. There's no tree movement in the background, so yeah. And what I did from here is I pre-comped this layer. Got a layer, pre-compose, move all attributes, and <clears throat> just to get the uh, the position of where I am. I went ahead and went to time and echo. I set it to, I believe, blend? No. Minimum. Maximum. Maximum was what it was at. And you can go ahead and scrub through to the end frame, which is about right there. And we're going to just jump these all the way up. You can go ahead and take the echo times per second, drop that down from 0 0.0333 to 0 0.0133. And as you'll see, they bunch together a little bit more. Now this is just uh, to get a reference line here for where the, uh, the running is and where the lightning is going to be. So now with that still there, I'm going to go ahead and create a new solid. This can be whatever color you would like. I choose black just because it's a pretty easy color. It's going to disappear once you do the uh, <clears throat> uh, Saber plugin. But go down to Video Copilot and Saber. And you'll see here you have a nice lightsaber. And that's the end of the tutorial. I'm kidding. Uh, what we're going to do is turn it off. I'll go ahead and reset it. We're going to turn it off for right now. We're going to turn off the layer. And with the base plate still on, we're going to go ahead and we know that 
uh, we can just look at my the tops of my head and we can go from here and just create a nice little line here here there okay now you do not want to close this mask so you're not going to come up and click there you're going to just click your uh, what's this button called the selection tool I should know that and turn your saber layer back on and we are going to go to customize core saber layer masks now you got to make sure this mask is on your layer and there we go so now this nice neon white looking thing and we're going to go ahead and click arc reactor as the preset and using this little tool you can toggle off the mask toggle back on and off and so that is the gist of it uh, and basically we're just going to take the mask itself and it's very simple this is where it starts to become very very easy we're going to go to edit uh, duplicate control D uh, command D if you're on a Mac and go ahead select the layer and I'm just going to move it down a little bit and maybe offset it just a little bit look like coming off the shoulder now the effect can be different for each person uh, depending on how many layers you want to use how you do your lines I mean you can make these uh, mask lines jagged and you'll probably get a very good effect I should try that later on but uh, for right now I'm just showing you exactly how I did it in uh, the video that I showed you beforehand I'll just go ahead and we'll duplicate it again very tedious just kind of time-consuming work and it duplicate and you're just going to go ahead and do that throughout the whole entire uh, body and then we're going to go through and we're going to refine some of these masks if you can see here this one is where the top of my head was and the top of my head's over there so if I want it to be down lower I'm just gonna go ahead and move it up a little bit move this one up move this one over to here and vice versa now I'm not gonna go ahead and do that right now because that's just gonna take more time out of your day and mine and we don't need to be going through all of that so we can go ahead and turn those off now what you're going to want to do is go through turn that off just so we can see this go to the echo layer that you have the echo preset and just go ahead and uh, delete it just clear that out now as you can see I'm still running through the frame I haven't applied the blur yet I'll show you that in a second but we're gonna go ahead and turn on the layer again you can de uh, not desaturate but take the opacity down a little bit I don't I'm just gonna maybe drop it down a little bit but what you want to do is the start offset you're gonna turn that down that's how we get our motion We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go back to where that frame was. I'm trying to think. 117. All right, so we're gonna have the start offset there. We're gonna click, make a keyframe, and now it's just a matter of going through, frame by frame. <laughs> My baby's in the background. All right, and then bumping it up, just a little bit at a time 
to match the movement. And it just, it gives a little bit more accuracy. Here you go, frame by frame. There. Oops. Right there. Now you can start to get more involved in adding uh, some mats and blocking it off and uh, adding extra glows. I didn't do that in this because it just didn't seem you know, like it needed it. It was just kind of one of those perfect one-off situations where it didn't need to be done. And then we'll finish this off by bringing it all the way down. So as you can see, if I do a ramp preview of it, They're matching up with the body. Now, you can change these up and move them down. I might do that. I might make this a little more realistic. While we're doing that, let's just do this. Bring this down. Do this. Just kind of drag these things down and through. Now, as you can see, it's not updating. And if yours doesn't do that, it's just easy. Go over here, and you just want to purge your memory just a little bit. You'll see it go through, and now we're back. Okay. Now, right now, I look like Zoom from the TV show, but that's not what we're going for. We're going for the flash, so we're just going to go ahead, change the color to an orange. And there you go. And the blurring of the body is very, very simple. You can just go down here, time, go to CC forced motion blur. And as you can see, I'm blurred out right there. We can go ahead and maybe drop down the, uh, bump it up now, maybe drop it down. Uh, the shutter angle and turn up the blur samples. And so, now when you view it, I'm going to go through really slow because I got that CC force motion blur. Yeah, and so it's fairly simple to do that. Now we can go through and we can change some of the settings, uh, but first I'm gonna go ahead and, I don't like that end uh, just staying there. So we're gonna go ahead and right at the end of where you pass outside of frame, go to the end offset, scrub forward about three frames, bring that all the way down. And you can even Make the size, the end size, maybe make it thinner. Whoops. There we go. And now it looks like it's fading out. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go to the distortion, and we want to go to the core distortion. Uh, now you can turn off the, uh, the central beam, and that'll leave you with your uh, electricity looking lightning and we can go ahead and change the scale we can bring it down I think I want to bring it up yeah bring it up and then we want to turn the distortion mount up you don't want to turn up too much because then you'll start to get these weird little bubbles another thing you can also do on this effect is add some Turbulent Displacement, which is fairly easy. Right click in the Effects and Controls panel and go to Distort, Turbulent Displacement, and turn the scale down. 
any amount up. Turn down some more. But with it on, with it off, just adds a little bit more uh, character. Ooh, maybe not right there. Unless you're going for that, then by all means. But <clears throat> I don't think it needs that. Looks pretty good. Now, for basic uh, coloring, I just went ahead and on top of the CC Force Motion Blur, I just brought the shadows up and created a nice flat image. I shot this at uh, what they call Magic Hour, which is just at sunset when everything is in a nice, good uh, exposure, I guess you would say. And did the same thing to the lightning. Just kind of brought it up a little bit, flattened it out, brought the brightness down a little bit, and then went over and added an adjustment layer. And you can uh, find LUT files, color LUT files, uh, anywhere. This is a vintage uh, Kodak. And just bring in the contrast a little bit. I'm not going to be able to get the exact look of what I did. I'll try. And boost the saturation a little bit because it has a lot of good colors. They're getting washed out. Uh, maybe we'll desaturate this just a little bit so we can go in and saturate the just a little bit more. And there we go. So we'll do a quick look. Oh no! Somebody's not uh, in the best mood. She's alright. She's just hungry. Mommy took her away. <laughs> oh, she's saying mama mama. Alright. So, go ahead and we're RAM previewing. You can also, uh, so this area goes a little faster, turn off, keyframe the uh, motion blur, the CC Force motion blur to turn on. But, yeah, and there we go. And then add the uh, sound effects, uh, whatever you would like. Uh, if you want to use the exact sound effects from the TV show, I'm pretty sure on YouTube you can find some people that have uh, got the sound effects. Uh, you can also check out uh, velocity sounds like swishes and passes, uh, Video Copilot. I'm not sponsored by them. I just enjoy a lot of their products. I think they're great. Um, their designer uh, sounds are amazing. But uh, yes, that is it. Uh, just add some widescreen bars. Go ahead and just add some widescreen bars real quick. Uh, make this, make it cinematic. Widescreen, boom. Michael Bay in this. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys. This is my very first tutorial. Um, you know, I can't thank you guys enough for asking about this effect. Uh, it's very simple and you can do some pretty complex stuff with it. This is just a very simple run. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later.